Senate President Ahmed Lawan and Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Badabiamila have been given an ultimatum of 14 days to probe the allegations of missing 4.4 billion naira of public money budgeted for the National Assembly. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project Serap, who gave the deadline, did so in a letter written to the leadership of the National Assembly, adding that it will take all appropriate legal actions if the legislative arm failed to probe the allegations. It admonished lawmakers to find out if the fund was misappropriated, diverted or stolen. Now joining us to discuss this is the Executive Director, Serap Barista Adeto Kumbo Mumuni, and Good Governance Advocate, Shegun Shopitan. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Pleasure to be here. All right, so we have Shegun here. I'll start with you, Shegun. I mean, the first thing that any that will come to anybody's mind when we hear these, um, you know, uh, outrageous amounts of money is, how do you just say funds uh, to the tune of 4.4 billion naira is missing? How, I mean, from the National Assembly, how does that even happen? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, this is Nigeria, so... Um, <laughs> Anything is possible. Um, but that's on a lighter note. Um, I think that what has actually happened is the money is not exactly missing, you know, in the context of money um, disappearing, you know, from somewhere. It, it, it's more of a case of um, a series of transactions that have not been accounted for properly, um, that are, are very opaque, um, shady, um, some apparently under the table, um, monies collected that were not retired, you know, those types of things. So what Serap has done is to add up all of those transactions um, and they came to about 4.4 billion naira. And they're asking the National Assembly uh, management, um, you know, you know, speaking to its leadership to account for those monies because they are public funds. They are taxpayers' money and, you know, it's your money and my money. Um, it's not theirs to spend as they will. Uh, there are provisions within the law as to how monies can be appropriated, what they can be done with, and when you've done whatever it is that you're supposed to do with it, how to account for it. You know, so that accountability is seriously missing, and that's what Serap is asking for, is demanding for, from uh, the leadership of the National Assembly. So it's not as if money disappeared. It's more a case of, you know, come and account for this money. The Nigerian public demands to know, especially when one puts that within the context of the fact that these are our representatives whose primary function within a democratic governan, uh, uh, government is checks and balances. How can you hold the executive arm of government accountable when you yourself are not? You know, so, so I think it's a very, very fundamental um, thing that Serap has done. Uh, some people might look at it and say, oh, 4.4 billion, what's that? Or, you know, um, how, how is it missing? Why is this, how is this our problem? Why is it the biggest problem we should go after now? But it, it's a fundamental issue. It speaks to the very, very core of what democracy is all about. Yes, of course, um, Sarah did go ahead to ask the leadership uh, of the National Assembly to display and show, I'd like to quote them directly, um, show strong leadership on this particular issue so that they can be seen as accountable or an accountable watchdog who oversees or checks the financial dealings of the Nas National Assembly. Uh, so, again, my question is, we know that there are checks, there should be, I don't know how much of these checks and balances happen in, our, in our, today's Nigeria, but there are supposed to be these checks and balances. But who checks the National Assembly? Who oversees these, you know, monies moving from uh, exchanging hands or monies that are supposed to be appropriated for things that are either not being used for them or diverted? Who should be held accountable? Aside from, you know, the, the financial committees within the National Assembly, who supposedly is uh, to have that oversight function? Okay, so so there are two. Uh, in in my mind, there are two two parties that have that duty and that obligation. Number one is the Auditor General of the Federation. Um, he is he is empowered by law, by the Constitution, actually, to audit the accounts of the federal government of Nigeria 
um, being the executive, the legislative, and the judicial arm of the government. It's their duty by law to do that. So that, that is supposed to be one uh, very key uh, mechanism, accountability mechanism um, prescribed by the law. Um, but as we know, you know, um, in this, in this uh, part, um, things generally don't play out as they ought to because of vested interests, because the system itself hasn't been designed in a manner that would allow for independence. So how can an auditor general that was appointed by the president audit the president? Or an auditor general that was confirmed by the National Assembly audit the National Assembly? You know, so 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 that that there is a, there is a problem but, in there for us Shegu, to look at. And the, find the auditor the general published a report. The auditor general published a report which made these findings known that there was a 4.4 billion naira that was unaccounted for. So let's give him some credits, can't we? Yeah, we we, we should give him some credits. You know, so the the question that then follows that is, first of all, credit you know for doing his job. He's just doing his job, so we shouldn't make too much of it, but at least he's done it. He doesn't have a choice. He has to, right? Um, but then, having done the job, uh, Marianne, you, you, you'll be shocked to find that the, the, the reports that Serap uh, um, uh, took those numbers from was the 2015 report for the 2015 financial year for the Federation um, that ended December 31, 2015. If you check the 2016 report, that document contains almost the same items to the same tune. Hmm. If you check the 2014 hmm. report, it's exactly the same story. And trust me, Marianne, it is, this is not limited to the National Assembly. If you go through that report, it's one of those documents that, you know, as a Nigerian who's just a bit, um, um, let me know you use certain expressions. You know, you look at some of these reports and you just lose it. Huh. You know, if you are looking for a way to exercise negative energy and get angry at the world, just pick up the Auditor General's report any year. Okay. In fact, if you want to get really angry, pick three of them up, like juxtapose them side by side for three years, and you find that it's exactly the same issues year oh. in, year out across all the parastatals across all the arms of government. Okay, because we're running out of time, let me quickly just go to my last question. Um, you are of the ACT network, which is also a civil society, just as Sarah. But Sarah seems to be taking up more of this responsibilities. Unfortunately, we were supposed to be joined by um, the executive secretary of Sarah, but she's having internet connection issues. Um, Aside from Sarah, there's hardly a strong voice out there to push these things. I mean, maybe there are people who are doing it, but Sarah seems to be the lone wolf in this matter. And they have pushed for other issues. And sometimes, you know, the judiciary, you know, stalls some of these things. And we never see the end of it. But there's so many cases in court. Now they're just appealing to the National Assembly. What is the guarantee that this particular issue will be dealt with and we will be able to get a response of sorts and there will be accountability? Um, there are no guarantees, you know, so so it's a very good point that you made, uh, Miriam. Um, the civil society in Nigeria right now um, is is probably just beginning to find its footing again, if, if one can say so. I don't even know how true that is. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a sector of society that is critical to the success of our democracy that is not doing well, you know. So like you rightly said, in terms of... Um, picking out issues of accountability and holding them up to the public light, Serap has done a fantastic job of their lone voice. Um, my, 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 my organization is also doing its bit in different areas. You know, uh, advocacy for good governance, it's a huge space. Yeah. And the, the, the point is, there is a, a need for uh, um, a coming together of Nigerians as a whole. Let's not forget that the people in these civil society organizations are ordinary Nigerians who just decided to pick up the, the gauntlet mm. and try to do something and try to say something mm. in the public space. So this, and that, that brings me to the point I was trying to make, you know, about two parties being responsible for these accountability initiatives. One is, you know, the Auditor General who has a constitutional role. The other is you and I, Nigerians. 
Um, the Freedom of Information um, Act, I keep saying this, you know, every time that I have the opportunity, oh, we don't use oh, it. Shag Nigeria, oh, that's a whole kettle of, I mean, that's a different discussion for another day, because if we start talking about the FOI yeah. and, you know, what you can do with the FOI, the, the drama that, you know, comes with all of it. And what do you do right after yeah. that? Sometimes... You use the FOI, but then these ministries, these departments, and you know um, agencies uh, still drag yeah. their feet. So, but I want to say thank you, Shegu. We have to go right now. Shegu Shopitan is of the Act Network. He's a good governance advocate. Thank you for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Thank you. They know where the money is actually, child. but the money can be found if that's if they can do their work according to um, leaders. She get so about the 40, 40 what? 44.4 40. 40. 40. billion. Yeah. Ah, and we have this coronavirus of a thing at hand. 44.4 billion is missing as well. So, um, well, I think what we should do or what we can do to this situation now because. This morning, according to the news this morning, that um, very soon now that they are going to go on, on lockdown totally. That's if every one of us couldn't use our nose marks, shall you get? So if a kind of things like that should be our call, what do they have for us? The, the country is corrupt, you understand? But the only God will save us, you understand? And uh, we pray one day things will get better. We have institutions, but they are not working. Every now and then, we hear cases of misappropriation of funds, money is being missing, uh, snakes swallow money and all of that. And I think uh, we just have to rise up, because if our institutions are not working, then we need to at least put some machineries in, in place so that at least we can check them, because it's like those people are being compromised. Because you can see that the governors, the ex-governors, uh, senators, they turned the National Assembly of a thing into their retirement uh, home. So it's like a clique who has been there to subject the masses into some sort of uh, suffering and uh, maybe turn themselves into a small god and begin to act irresponsibly, but feeling that or believing that there's nothing we can do. So here's my take. Accountability, they say, is the watchword for good governance. But can we say that we're getting good governance in Nigeria? How do we say we have a government that has zero tolerance for corruption and yet ridiculous amounts of money disappear right under the nose of our office holders and no one is held accountable? Have we become so used to the normalcy of looking away or leave on for good? What happened to making sure that taxpayers' monies are not misappropriated or diverted or siphoned by corrupt officials? Could it be that we are also allowing these acts to happen because maybe our judiciary has failed us? Well, thank God for civil societies like Serap that keep demanding for explanations and bringing these issues to the fore. But how long can we go on like this? When will we stand up for Nigeria and against these corrupt officials? Is this the Nigeria that you want for your children and their children after them to inherit? Think about it. Well, I am Mariana Kohn thanking you for watching. Have a good evening.